What's up guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. What I have in front of me is a 3D pen and no I'm not going to be doing a review or anything on this. This actually isn't even mine. This is my sister's and all of a sudden it stopped working. Uh, my dad got to it. He used a little bit of brute force and that got nowhere. It actually uh, broke the tip off of the 3D pen. So what we're going to be doing today is taking this apart, checking out what's inside this because I'm actually pretty curious to see what's inside uh, and you know it's going to be fun trying to figure out how to get this thing apart on video uh, and then once we have it apart we're going to see if we can actually get this thing back up and running again. I'm going to show you the problem in just a second. Uh, for some reason when you put the filament in it's not catching and it's not going through the pen itself. I don't think it's jammed. I think it's something wrong with the actual uh, motor uh, mechanism on the top right here. There should be a small DC motor right here and for some reason it's just not taking that filament and threading it through the rest of the pen. And by jammed I mean I don't think there's excess filament blocking the new filament from going through. I just think there's something wrong with the motor mechanism up here and if this thing will heat up and actually uh, give me the green go light we can start putting some filament in and I can show you guys the problem. But these things are notorious for breaking. I went online, checked out some forums to see uh, if there were any solutions to this and you know people were complaining all over the place that these things are so cheap and they break all the time uh, and there wasn't really any helpful information online. Pretty much uh, everyone was just saying you know take some sort of thin metal object and just shove it down here and try to unclog it. That's what my dad did and he ended up breaking off this little tip uh, piece right here which you don't really need uh, but my sister was kind of uh, frustrated at him for that and I'm still waiting for this to turn green so we can put some filament through. So I'm going to grab some filament and we can start threading some through. Ooh, look at that. Look at that pretty pink. All right, so green means go. The heating element has reached its ideal temperature to start melting the plastic. Of course, we're not even going to be able to get that far because it's not taking any of the plastic into the pen. And I'll show you what I mean by that right now. So I'm going to place the plastic uh, right next to the intake, push it in a little bit and just hit the button. Yeah, and you'll hear the uh, wow, and you'll hear the motor actually start to spin up. And by the way, the diameter of this plastic is the right size. It's 1.75 millimeters, and this pen requires 1.75 millimeter diameter plastic. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to thread it through here, and yeah, it's not taking any of that in. I can actually force it in manually. I actually uh, tried this earlier, and I forced it in all the way through the pen, and it came out melted on the other side. Uh, but you know. Obviously that's not the purpose of this. This is supposed to uptake the plastic automatically. No one wants to, you know, shove in all the plastic while uh, you're trying to make something out of it. Yeah, so that is not working at all. So, you know, even if I push uh, the button to take all of it out or to push all of it out, nothing happened. So we're gonna have to take this apart and see what's up. Now, I have never taken one of these apart before, so it's going to be a fun little learning experience. By the way, guys, this isn't really a repair video. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to repair this. This is really just a quick little teardown because I really want to see what's inside here. If we're able to repair it, that's a bonus, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. So let's go ahead and tackle this screw right here. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to open this entire back plate or not. There might be some clips too, so we will see. I'm trying to get the... Uh, screw head out of my box. There we go. And I'm just going to take that screw out. Oh, well, look at that. That entire back plate comes off. That makes things a lot easier. And there's nothing much in here. Uh, you can see the primary circuit board right here and the heating elements probably right below that. Uh, you can see the tiny little DC motor right here. This is probably the root of the problem. So I'll take a closer look at that. And then there's just really two plugs running to that main board. So I can go ahead and remove those. I'm about five minutes into the disassembly process. I'm surprised at how easy everything was to get apart. There's a couple screws and then really everything else is just held in by clips. You can see the motor mechanism right here, which I'm about to test out. I believe this is the root of the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything back up and see if this thing actually works and what happens when you try to put plastic down it. Now I know some of you guys want to see this in action, so I have the pin plugged in now and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the button to intake the plastic and as you will see, it does work. And there's actually a pretty intricate little gearbox down there. I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button. And you can see that the gear to intake the plastic does start spinning, so it is functional. I think, 
it might just need to be reseated. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, take the rest of this apart and then throw everything back together and see what happens with that. I think if I uh, took it apart, put it back together and reseated everything, uh, it might actually work. So let's try that. Just for verification's sake, I went ahead and removed the tubing. It's not very hard to get out at all. There's only one clip holding it in, and then once you get the uh, motor mechanism removed, you just have to pull it out the back. Uh, and as you can see, that is clogged free, so this is not part of the problem. And this is where a cameraman would really come in handy, but unfortunately I don't have one, so just bear with me during this clip. I'm going to try to give you a closer view of this because I found the problem. So. Uh, you can see that very intricate little gearbox right here. In my opinion, it's overly intricate, way overkill for this application. You could have accomplished the same thing with like two gears. Um, yeah, but they went overkill with this and there's a ton of moving parts in there. And as a result, uh, there's a better chance that something is going to go wrong. And in this case, something has gone wrong uh, when the gears has worn down a lot and it's no longer driving uh, this head right here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the pin. And did I turn it off? No, I didn't. It just all of a sudden decided it wanted to go to uh, standby mode. Give me a second. All right, so the pen went into standby mode for a second and I had to uh, cut the clip. So let me show you what's going on. It will actually drive the head, uh, but the minute you put pressure on it, it immediately stops. So I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. As I said, bear with me guys. And yeah, I'm putting very little pressure on that and it just stops right there. And that's because one of the gears inside the gearbox has worn down quite a bit and it's barely making contact with the other gear. So the minute you put pressure on the head, the whole thing just stops. And you guys know what I mean, not the whole thing, but the actual head stops and the rest of the gears continue to spin. And you can actually hear that horrible grinding sound when you have it out of the pen. Sounds absolutely awful. Uh, but I do not have the skills to repair this. I'm going to go on eBay maybe and see if I can buy a new module like this. But, you know, I think we're just better off buying a new pen. This thing's uh, trash uh, most likely. So let's go ahead and continue the teardown. That's kind of a bummer, but as I said, uh, wasn't really going to be a repair video, more of a teardown video. So let's take this thing apart further. I didn't think I was going to be able to get this thing entirely apart, but as you can see, I was able to. I'm actually surprised at how modular everything is. It's really, really easy to take apart. Uh, and that also means it's probably really, really easy to assemble as well. So that's why these things are so cheap because they can have really cheap labor. No skill is really required at all. Um, so yeah, you can get one of these for like under 50 bucks on Amazon if you're interested. I might throw a link to one in the description. Uh, maybe I can find this exact one, but then again, you probably don't want to buy this exact one because it only lasted for like uh, three or four months, so that was kind of a disappointment. Uh, but you can see everything out right now. This is just the case for the uh, 3D pen itself. You can see two translucent windows right here for the LEDs. There's a little opening right here uh, for this potentiometer, which changes the temperature of the heating element. And you can see the heating element right here. Nothing really too complicated. Can't take it apart anymore because uh, it's a single piece of plastic. There's nowhere to, you know, break it open or anything. And there's just four prongs that connect to the main board itself. Uh, really, really simple design. You look on the back here, you can see all the circuitry. Uh, not really sure what this package was. I grabbed a magnifying glass and tried to identify it. The text is ultra, ultra small. I kind of tried to figure out what uh, each of the numbers were because once again, I could barely see it but uh, I, I just couldn't figure it out and I looked it up online and the results didn't come out right. So I'm not really sure. I'll try to get uh, ghetto macro mode up in here in a second. So maybe you guys can figure it out. And there's a closer look at the board. As you can see, there's really not much on here. Most of the stuff that needs to be done is done through the 12 volt DC power supply right here. This is a three amp power supply at 12 volts. So that's uh, 36 watts of power max. Um, the most interesting thing on this board is probably that logic right here. So let me go ahead and grab my uh, magnifying glass and I'll see if I can't get a good shot of that. There you go. You can kind of see it now. I'm looking at the screen on the camera and it's coming out okay. So if some of you can see that uh, and maybe you know what exactly that is doing or what the part is, um, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section because I am kind of curious. I couldn't find any information on this. Yeah, so as you can see, there's really nothing much else on here. There's some regulation circuitry for this uh, heating element right here, and that's really about it. Uh, on this side, here's the speed adjustment, and sometimes uh, this tends to come off on new pens, and people you know, are wondering you know, what's going on because this is just flapping around freely. Uh, it actually attaches to this little white button right here, 
and it just flops around all over the place and people think the pen's broken. Well, well technically it is. Uh, but all you have to do is open it back up and attach this little arm back onto this black piece right here and then you're good to go. Um, I noticed that on uh, a couple videos and I just thought I would mention it. And you can see the plugs for the power. This is the plug for the power. This is the plug from the motor. And really, I mean, I'm just droning on because there's nothing much else on here. There's the little tactile buttons for the, uh, the feed directions. And that's about it. So we were able to find the problem. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that's really not worth repairing. You're better off just buying a whole new pen. So I'm gonna keep this thing around for spare parts and maybe a possible video in the future where I utilize some of the parts in this to build a 3D printer uh, because some of the parts in this do have that potential. So definitely worth keeping this around for a little bit. That's gonna be about it for this teardown. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please leave a reason why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been working really hard on the website for the past couple days. Um, so the link for that will be in the description if you want to check it out. I also bought a secondary domain, uh, aacatarchives.com uh, for the archive section of the website, which is actually hosted on the server back there. So if you want to check that out, you can check that out as well. Uh, I would really appreciate some feedback on that because, you know, I just got it up uh, and I'm still making tweaks here and there to it. The archives page isn't even done yet. So yeah, still have a lot of work ahead of me for that. And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can uh, use our Amazon associate links, which will also be in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.